am Will Brent. Today, I'll be talking about the three eyes of leadership. This is sponsored by Leadfinity, Change You, and Moshe Speaker Bureau. This is a talk by Will Brent, the ineffable whisperer. He's also the father of Asian firewalking, and he has trained over 250,000 students as a keynote speaker. This is some of his track record. Let's introduce you the three eyes of leadership. There are three eyes. The first eye is intention. The second eye is incisiveness. And the third one is influence. Let's go into each one. So the first eye is intention. This is the leadership talk of the year 2023. And uh, to me, intention is much more important than even your year-end resolutions, your goal setting, your beliefs, your action plans and strategies. Why? Because if your intention is evil, dark, negative, revengeful, or is driven by any of the nine deadly vices such as jealousy, greed, lust, laziness, anger, arrogance, addiction and, and attachment, you will fail. And you will attract negative, toxic people and unfavorable events to your to, to yourself. To reinforce your intention, you I suggest you leverage your intention with a key reward such as pleasure, a treat, a massage, a trip, rewarding yourself with a gadget, a new new iPhone, or fulfilling a core value and principle. Rewards can further strengthen by inspiring, instilling, implementing, and implying. So set your intention clearly and incisively, which leads to our second key result area. Incisiveness. Being incisive means an idea or an opinion is expressed in a clear and direct way that shows a really good understanding of what's important. So hence, an incisive person is one's thoughts or speech approved by others in one's ability to think, to express one's ideas clearly, briefly, and forcefully. So the synonyms for incisive is penetrating, sharp, keen, and acute. So learn from Robrand's new breakthrough idea for 2023, which is called the Three Words Intro, or also known as Descriptive Category. These are some links there. The third I is influence. So there are six ways one can influence. One is who. Who can you influence? You can influence your boss, your subordinates, peers, shareholders, clients, suppliers, partners, friends, your family, even your enemies. You can influence politicians, the media, the, the, the key, res key or opinion leaders, and also the public opinion. Number two is when. You can influence timing, get the best timing, influence opportunity and threat. You can influence time management. You can even influence delays and planning. Third is where. Where can you influence? You can influence the temple, the church, the religious place, your office, your home, schools, the societies, anywhere, land, sea, space, sports, arts, any arena, music, library, the architecture, or any target area. And what can you influence? You can influence finance, marketing, all very important, uh, public relations, IT, human resources, operations, setting benchmark. You can influence creativity, innovation, learning, even history and perception. Number five is why. Well, you can also influence the why, the philosophy, the big why, why you're doing things, principles, the rationale, the thinking process, the beliefs and faith. And lastly, how? You can influence strategies, tactics of companies or yourself, methods, processes, and uh, standard operational procedures. So let me uh, give you uh, a concept that is popularized by Stephen R. Covey. He explores the, the circle of concern, which is a wide range of worries that we might have about a topic. The circle of influence is narrowing of the first circle into those worries that we can do something about either directly or indirectly. So let's compare the difference between, let's say, probably the most powerful person in the world, which is the President of the United States, versus a tea lady in an in a, in a office.
years. Now, the American present circle of influence is most likely to, the, to be the biggest in the world. Why? Because it's excess. He, has, he can approve millions of dollars of government funds and he can practic practically execute his control and directions and his team and the chief of staff, whatever, the military, in any key result area that he chooses, such as legislation, healthcare, border control, uh, economic recovery, balanced budget, defense, foreign affairs, depending on the president. And of course, each president has his own pet project. It could be also terrorism, threats, disaster control, jobs, gamble, whatever. But the president normally chooses to focus 80% of his, uh, 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 just about around 80% of his efforts, time and money on the top three of his favorite pet projects. So he narrows his circle of concern to only a handful of key areas of influence at any one period. Now, compared to a tea lady, a tea lady may have numerous, lots of lots of concerns. He may be concerned, he may even have the biggest concerns in the world. He may want to save the, the whales, global warming, he may be an activist for racism or minimum wages. But most likely, the tea lady, a tea lady will be, may even be the most popular person in the company, may even be more popular than the boss. But her authority or allocated budget is extremely limited. Therefore, her actual circle of influence is limited by maybe, say, the pantry budget or which brand of tea or snack to purchase, cleanliness. And that's about it. Yeah, you get a picture. So the moral of the story is that you need to decide your top three key result areas of concern which you can realistically and I repeat realistically make a huge difference and put this key result areas concern inside your circle of influence yeah so finally probably the, the president might choose only on three things healthcare homeland security and jobs for his first year in office whereas a tea lady might focus on a snack variety, maybe winning the best employee of the year and being an informal cheerleader or listener to employee problems, you know, like a bartender, like a like someone, you know, like a psychiatrist, a, a counselor, that, you know, he listens to people's problems because he has his, uh, the year. So in summary, the three eyes of leadership, intention, incisiveness, influence are the three most essential skills for you effective leadership. So use these three eyes to build a strong leadership culture in your team and in your organization. Uh, uh, we, in Changeship, we also do a lead affinity, which is to build a strong, infinite leadership culture. And uh, this is the Changeship track record, uh, Fortune 500 companies and top brands. Uh, if you like to hire uh, uh, myself or Brand or any of these top speakers, we have a wide range uh, of top speakers that can present or uh, in anywhere in the, in any city in the world. In fact, I'm a digital nomad and I can do online or live training. So thank you very much. This is Whisper or Brand with a big thank you uh, being a changed catalyst myself. Thank you for uh, providing you with some of the most powerful game-changing ideas. It's, it's a very big deal for me to be a, of service to you. I'm truly humble and grateful to even be just a little bit part of your journey. We'll meet again, Robert. Thank you.